All right, three after, let's make sure I didn't miss anybody, then we'll get started. Do, 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 do. All right, I think I got everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Community time, okay. Anything from the community that people want to bring up? It's not on the agenda. All right, not hearing any. Uh, SDK call. So no updates from the SDK other than we do have a call planned for right after this one. Um, I know obviously Clemens can't make it, but Scott, hopefully you can. I think uh, Tim Bray may have some issues he wants to bring up. So Scott, even if you didn't complete your action items, um, if you or anybody else who normally joins the SDK call can try to join that, um, that way we can answer Tim's questions because I think he had some. Um, so that'd be good. So again, just a reminder, it is right after this call. Uh, incubator, we are up to two end users. We're still looking for some more, so please send me your information when you have it. Also, if you want to be listed as an adopter, please let me know and I'll add your name to the list. Um, KubeCon San Diego. Uh, I actually had, haven't done some, any thinking at all about this. I have had a couple people ping me saying that if we need additional people to speak, they're willing to volunteer, so that's great, thank you. Um, but at first, feel like we need a proposal in terms of what we want to talk about first. So I'm going to try to write something up, hopefully before next week's call, so we can start talking about it. And that uh, this will give us a clear picture of what we're going to do. Chances are it's going to look very similar to what we did in the past, but just wanted to have some talks offline first about it. But we do have some time since it's not till like November or something. All right, moving forward. Before we jump into the PRs or issues and stuff, are there any other topics people want to bring up that I might have been forgetting? Okay, cool. In that case, what I'd like to do first is just a little bit of cleanup. Um, Topini opened up this issue or PR a long time ago and there have been some comments on there that he hasn't addressed. I pinged him many, many times asking what's up with that. Um, he hasn't responded. So I'm inclined to say that we close this PR for right now. It is just an extension, so it's easy to add later if we need to. And we can also reopen it if he reappears. But unless someone on the call here wants to volunteer to champion this and take it forward, I'm inclined to say we close it for right now. Any comments or concerns about that? Okay, any objection to closing then? All right. Go for it. Yep. <clears throat> okay, cool, thank you guys. All right, moving forward. Um, next on the list is maps, 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 maps. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. come on. All right. Um, so, uh, let's see. Evan did modify his PR, I believe, on Tuesday evening. And I think the only significant change was he removed this section here which defines the mapping of how to serialize a map into say an HTTP header with the dashes and stuff. I think that's pretty much the only change he made since then. So basically the general gist of this to refresh people's memory is get rid of maps as a valid attribute type that does not touch the data attribute, just all the other attributes, including extensions. So on last week's call, there seemed to be general consensus to head in that direction to removing maps. However, um, I want to pick on Vladimir a second here. Um, now, Vladimir, Jim did ping me offline. He still feels quite strongly that we should be able to keep maps if we just simplify them down to things like only one level of depth and stuff like that. Do you want to speak to that? Vladimir, you have a come off mute? Okay, obviously you can't come off mute. Is there anybody on the call who has an opinion one way or the other on this? I do. Go for it. Uh, I think removing maps entirely would be uh, just fine with me. Okay. Uh, do you have any opinion on uh, Jim's comment about, can't we just simplify them down to just one level deep? I think if you if you want to do that, uh, you, you still run into problems where things collide. Can you elaborate on what you mean by collide? You mean like so? Okay, so let's say I want to make a three-level deep map, and so now I have to write some sort of custom convention, and I have to mix the, what splits my map uh, keys into the cloud events attributes. Gotcha. 
So okay. I think that you know if if you're going to write something custom, just use cloud events and be able to use the keys and maybe it's not so bad if we use a different string in your custom extension to, to split the, the keys in the map. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to chime in here? In particular, is there anybody on the call, including Vladimir, hopefully you can off mute, who would like to advocate keeping maps? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Um, do people feel like the PR has been sitting out there long enough, people have reviewed it well enough that they feel like they're comfortable voting? Um, or would you rather have one more week since this is kind of a drastic change? This is up to you guys. Yeah, what we could do is instead of voting at the meeting, people could vote on the PR itself over the next week and then we can actually confirm the voting next week. We could do that too. Yep, that's a good idea. Is there any objection to doing a, an asynchronous vote? That way we don't feel like people were rushed into this decision? Especially because so many people are out, gives them an opportunity to participate in the vote of such an important change. That is a good point. We only have 16 people, which is definitely lower than our normal average. That's a very good point. Okay. I'd say, I'd say follow up uh, by email as, uh, again and state that we're doing the voting over the next week and that the fi final total will be at, on next week's call. Yep, that's what I was planning on doing. Yep, exactly. Okay, so Okay, any objection to kicking off that vote and heading in that direction? Okay, anybody who want to make any last comments before we move on? It's a little too easy. All right, moving forward then. Um, all right, so I gave you guys fair warning uh, through email last night. James's and Clemens PRs about how to handle data. Hopefully you guys have actually taken a look at these and reviewed them. Um, does anybody want to volunteer to speak at all about either PR, either in favor of one, against one, or just about the, the, the problems that's, that these are trying to solve? Don't be shy. Otherwise, I will pick on people. I did warn you guys. Okay, that did it. You forced me into it. I'm going to pick on Christoph for two reasons. One, to make sure he gets on the roll call, but two, because Christoph, you have, tend to have lots of really cool ideas and deep thoughts on things. What's your opinion on these two PRs? Have you had a chance to review them? Uh, <laughs> I reviewed the initial one of James, um, and I had a quick look at those two. But to be honest, I, it, I, I don't feel like I have a strong opinion there, to be honest. Okay, fair enough. All right. Let me pick on somebody else then. Mark, I'd like to get your take on this because I know you've had you. I know you've at least read them. Yeah, I think that the so James four seventy is you know try. It's a more simplified. Uh, you know, in terms of text version than what uh, 471, the alternative one that uh, Clemens did, uh, came up with. I think the, the, the problem that James is trying to solve is being able to have binary data transported in such a way that uh, it's well known how to transform it as it goes through multiple hops. And, you know, based on some other texts that I've read from him, he, he sees this as a, as, a, as a big issue. I think he's also wanting to have some simplification of uh, possibly even removing the type system and having everything be strings. Uh, you know, in terms of what Clemens wrote in 471, <clears throat> 
it let's just say that there's a lot more text <laughs> uh it and when i when i look through this i i the the implementer in me starts saying you know what's the what's the flow chart that i need to follow in order to be able to correctly decode and re-encode a cloud event um and i'm worried that I'm worried that that's not uh, simplified enough. And if it's too complex, then people will get it wrong. So I, I'm, I'm up in the air on this one. Interesting. So uh, let me ask you this, aside from the text that's in the two, do you think they both go about solving the problem the same way? And the difference is just the wording. Yeah, I, I, I think that they are, they are mostly aligned, but again, there, there can be more nuances uh, derived from uh, 471 uh, and 470 is likely more, you know, simplified, straightforward in terms of uh, its normative uh, discussion. So, so Okay. But, but, you, you know, really, really what I'd like is for other people to, to take a look and, and comment on this as well, because uh, we, without either James or, or Clemens to, to help with some of the discussion, it's more difficult for me to know the, the exact intent. Yeah. So let me ask this. Is there anybody on the call willing to admit they've actually read both PRs? and can comment on it. Speaking for myself, I definitely haven't. I need more time to really look at them. And they're, they're very extensive. There is a lot of text to read and, <laughs> and understand. So I really cannot comment right now yet. OK, I appreciate you speaking up. Thank you, Roberto. Because I, 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 I spent quite a bit of time this morning going back and rereading both PRs and the original text from the original issue to see what was really, you know, the, the, the genesis of all this. And I feel like I have a better understanding now that I've gone back and refreshed my memory. Um, but I also get the sense from reading both PRs that, <clears throat> um, how do I say this? It, it just feels like there might be a simpler solution, even though both of them may be 100% accurate. It's just from an outsider's point of view, reading the text here, I may be asking myself, why is there so much text here to explain something that, that, that should be easy to do? And the fact that there's so much text leads me to believe I'm missing something. And that makes me scared. You know, like, um, so I'm wondering whether, Mark, so Mark, you said something interesting there. You said that you thought that James's was easier from perhaps an implementation point of view. Um, I'm wondering if what that means is what we should do is when Clemens gets back from vacation, I believe he's back next week, is ask him to perhaps look at making minor editorial tweaks to James. Is that way we get the simplicity from the implementation point of view, but maybe the sort of deeper in-depth discussion points from Clemens and sort of merge the two that way. Do you think that's possible or do you think that they're, they're too far apart to really kind of do that? I think that would be a good discussion to have with uh, all the parties. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds like we can't come to a vote on this if only a few people have actually read it. Um, and we do want to try to get the other guys involved. Um, I, yeah, I know James is going to be really difficult to get on the call here, um, mainly because of the time difference. I think he's in Australia. Um, obviously, when Clemens gets back, then we're going to have, you know, his point of view, which is obviously going to be biased for his PR. So it's going to be kind of a challenge not having the opposite point of view on the call. But I guess the best we could do is just hold off um, and see whether Clemens can, can do some magic in terms of merging the two. Because um, at this point in time, I don't feel comfortable trying to push a vote on this. I just don't feel like we've had enough review on this stuff. So unless someone has a, a more brilliant idea in terms of a way to go forward, we may just have to defer next week and, and just ask you guys to please look at these for next week because we got to have a we got to have a deep discussion on this stuff 
this is, and the map one are the two, I think, biggest issues outstanding for 1.0. So please review it for next week again. Yeah, we'll, I'll do. I'll okay, do. Thank, thank you, Roberto. Okay, anybody else want to chime in on any, on any of the points? Okay, in that case, let's see what we can move forward with. All right, Scott, your batching one. <clears throat> so I think there's actually two different discussions here in the same issue. One is we got on a slight tangent with the webhook specification. Um, and then of course there's the batching issue itself. So let's focus first on the batching since that's what the issue is about. I, this morning I tried to summarize four different options here as I see it. Um, if, if I missed one, please let me know. But I think the four options are go full bore and completely define batching. And that means not just from a syntax perspective, but include the processing model definition. So for example, one of the things Scott thinks is missing is some sort of response back to the sender to indicate um, whether each individual event itself was processed in some way. Even if it's just returning a list of 202s, at least then you know it got it and, and it wasn't lost in transit, that kind of stuff. The next level down from that is basically have what we have in the spec today, which is define batching from a straight syntax perspective, but don't say anything about the transport. And, it's, and you could kind of interpret that as an all or nothing kind of a thing, since most transports only have the notion of all or nothingness to them, but we actually don't even say that. So basically define it just from a syntax perspective. Another option is to remove batching from the spec, but talk about how you can do batching if you really wanted to, but it becomes an application level uh, definition meaning the batching gets shoved inside of the data attribute. And then it becomes up to the application to figure out how to extract it and process each one. But from a, but from a transport level perspective, this was still just a single cloud event that gets sent over the wire. So it's, it's kind of like doing nested cloud events in, in some fashion. And then finally is just remove batching entirely and say nothing at all about it. Um, I think those are the four options that I could see that people have possibly mentioned. Are there other options people could think of? Could we keep batching not specific in the sense option four and then do something for cloud events 1.1? 1 .1? I mean, batching is something that isn't addressed in any other transports that I know of at the level we want to address it. And implementing uh, responses about, hey, which one failed and all that would make cloud events way more complex in the sense that, as you said last week, we're not gonna be able to just describe it as, hey, just add these headers and now you have a cloud event. It's gonna be, hey, add these headers, now you have a cloud event, but you also need to respond in this very specific way. Mm -hmm. So could we maybe add it in a follow-up version or do we want it to be part of 1.0? Right, so Mark and I actually had a little bit of talk about this yesterday. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Mark, but I think when we, were, when we talked about this, we couldn't come up with a way to add it to the spec without it being a major version bump, meaning we'd have to go to version 2.0 in order to add it. And I believe the biggest reason is because um, a receiver of a cloud event that has batching, oh, my, oh no, this is a map discussion. Never mind. We were talking about this in the context of map, not batching. Um, yeah, I was going to correct you on that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, Propose the same thing on the map stuff, because as uh, I do believe that it is worth in getting the first release candidate out and then seeing if we want to do this for 1.0 or if, if we want to do it for 1.1. But the breaking change is something that is intense, so it might be worth doing it now. Yeah, I, my initial take on it is for both maps and batching, I don't see how to add that without it being a breaking change. Because in most cases, I think people are expecting <clears throat> cloud events to be sent as one-way messages, which means you have no guarantee that the other side actually got it aside from maybe a 202, right? At, 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 at the worst case scenario. And at that point, you don't know whether the other side understands maps or batching. And so you're kind of in the dark and there's no reliable way for the sender to know what's going on, whether, it, whether it's, whether the other side supports 1.1 or 1.0. So my initial take on it is we probably cannot add either one without it being a breaking change, meaning jumping up to 2.0. But I'd like to hear what other people think. 
gets added because it changes the content type. Interesting. So you're saying you think we could add batching as a 1.1? Yeah, but people have their hands up. Sorry. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I forgot. <laughs> Christoph, I think you're first. Okay. So the thing I'm always, I think that is difficult to understand is there's basically two types of batching. One is batching at the transport level where you have no semantic grouping of the components together, and the other one is more a semantic batch where those events belong together for some reason. Uh, so I'm trying to explain it maybe a little better. So if you have a bus, you just put people in there and they don't know each other. They just commute together, but they have no relation to each other. That would be a transport level batch batching. Um, so it's just random by chance that they are together. And I think that part we cannot really remove because there are transports that do this today. For example, Kafka just does it for you. There's no, or you can configure it, but per default, Kafka just does it. They just wait for uh, a defined time in your client, batch those messages together and send them to the server. And that's about it. And I don't think we, we should remove that or forbid a transport to do that. The other thing is to have more semantic grouping of things. So if you say, okay, this group of persons, they're actually a family or they're part of the serverless work group or whatever, then they have a semantic meaning why they, they belong together. And that's a really different concept. And then for events that would be maybe, okay, these events have been collected by this IoT device over the last minute or so. And then you wanna group them together. And the, the fact that you group them together should also remain uh, if you move them across several transports. So I think when we discuss, we should really make a difference between those two. And what, what I did when I made the original comment in the spec was adding this transport level batching where it says, yes, a single transport can batch events, but as a sender and as a receiver, you just take them as a random group and you process them one by one. And then you can, if you, hand them over to the next one. If you're just an intermediary, you're free to break up the batch or create new batches and so on. Yeah, so this is kind of what I'd like to keep. And then the next question is, how do we deal with this at HTTP level? Do we want to have this in HTTP? Do we want to define this in JSON? Or do we just want to keep it for those transports that have it like Kafka? Interesting, okay, thank you. Uh, Roberto, your hands up. Yes, I, I think Christoph explained it much better than I would have explained it. And I agree with him 100% that the, we can either leave it as is, where we have defined it at the transport level, which is what I would like to do, and not change the syntax of a cloud event to include the concept of batch in the cloud event specification itself. So my vote, my strong vote actually, is to leave things as is and leave it at the transport level. So I want to make sure I understand what you guys are saying when you say leave it at the transport level, because I... My interpretation of what's in the spec right now is not necessarily leaving at the transport level, other than what all we're really doing is saying, if you want to send a batch of them, here's the JSON for what it looks like, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an array. Exactly, and that's good enough. Okay, because I, I, I wasn't considering that transport level as much as, because it's not like we're actually interacting with the transport, it's just, we just define sort of the wrapping for it. Okay, I want to make sure everyone's on the same page as you. So you're advocating for basically number two, leaving it, leaving it as is. Leaving it as is, exactly, yes. Okay. And just to, for, for clarity's sake, Christoph, you're, you're basically saying keep it as is, number two? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, Scott, your hands up. Yeah, so, so I'm saying that if you try to implement this feature inside of HTTP, it's, there's not enough information to actually understand how to ack or knack each individual message for HTTP transport. Christoph or, or Roberto want to respond to that? It's something like PubSub. PubSub has a response back that says, this ID got this response. The, I can respond. Um, yeah, go ahead. I think, so if we just talk pure HTTP, not the webhook spec, then I'm actually, Maybe I'm, I'm saying something wrong, but maybe here we, don't, we have the same problem that we don't even know 
what is going on. So from a pure HTTP transport layer, all we define is there are some headers we add and then the response you get back, it's up to you. There is not really an, a definition of an error code. So it kind of, from HTTP level, it implies if you get a 400 error back, you did something wrong, or well, we don't have a definition of saying, uh, I don't know, your JSON is broken, or I do not accept that format or something. We did not define this either. So there's not really a way to acknowledge or not acknowledge a message fully either at the level that we have it at in PubSub. The other thing I'd like to say is that what you still can do is acknowledge or not acknowledge the whole batch of events, which is obviously not as good as what most other transports do. Um, but yeah, I think once we go into that, we should focus on the webhook spec and that's where it should go in my opinion. Anybody else want to comment on that? I feel like it's not valuable until the webhook spec is implemented. Because I have no idea how to implement this. So, Scott, I, oh, go ahead, Roberto. Or, no, I, I just uh, want to say how we implemented it in at Adobe with with batch. So we just send a whole bunch of events, and when, if the response is to XX, we say it's done. If it's not to XX, we say something failed, and we'll deliver them all all again. So we don't need to have an individual acknowledgement for each one of the events in the batch. We just treat it as all or nothing. Yeah, that was actually going to be my question back to you, Scott. Is <clears throat> excuse me, it. If, if you assume that it is an all or nothing thing and the race fee response code was for the entire batch, is that not a viable alternative for you? If it's, it's not super desirable, no. Can, can you elaborate a little? Cause, cause I'm trying my best to channel Clemens here, right? This is supposed to be one-way messages. This is eventing, not messaging, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, yeah, really- The reality is that all of these systems are built on top of messaging systems. Yeah, so. but, 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 my, but my point in saying that is these are supposed to be one-ways, right? So at, at the worst case scenario, you may get, you know, assuming you're not gonna get a 500, but let's assume you get at least a 202 back saying, yes, I got it, but that doesn't tell you anything beyond, yes, I got it. All the way to maybe you do get a 200, which probably means you should successfully process the whole thing. Um, why isn't that good enough? Because that's, as, as Christoph was saying, that that's basically all you have anyway, even for the single case, right? Yeah, and for the single case, that's fine. But if you're trying to do, you know, once delivery for these things, it, it doesn't work. So let's, let me poke on that a little just to make sure I completely understand it. Let's say you get back a 202 in the single case. All that means is I got it. It could have been dropped immediately on the floor by mistake or afterwards, but from your point of view as a sender, all you have is a 202. <clears throat> if I now turn on batching, yeah. why does that 202 mean something less significant to you? It's already pretty insignificant other than it the, got the it. The happy path is easy. The hard case is when the middle event fails. You're talking about the, the case where there's a, okay, where there are multiple hops. No, no, when there's multiple, there's, there's, you have a batch of stuff, right? And so you, the, you have to deliver that to something because the spec says it's gonna explode it out into individual events. Okay, so you're worried about, say, as an example, a case where there are 10 events being batched up, the first five are process, processed successfully, the sixth one dies, so the server decides to return, say, a 400. That's right. Okay. So, so Scott, it, it sounds like you're, you're, you're assuming the middleware portion of it will do the delivery of each event and give you a response in line at this, while you're waiting for a response back from that server. And I don't know that that's necessarily the case, but likely it would give you a response code saying I accept it or I don't accept it, but then would enqueue each of those events, possibly on, on for later processing and for later delivery. So I don't know that there should be an assumption that you would get immediate response to the, you know, 
disposure of each event uh, in line with, with your request. I, th I, th I think that's what most systems would do. There's, there's a persistence receipt that you can say, okay, I got the event. I've successfully unbatched this batch and I've put it into new persistence or I've processed it in some way. And the original request is going to be held open for most processing models. Right, but, but you, you explicitly said that uh, you wanted it. You wanted an error if it couldn't be delivered for, further delivered. But you know, I may be able to enqueue it onto a de delivery queue just yeah, fine. That's fine. That's great. Right? And it like, may it may fail f further on down the. That's absolutely not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about okay. making sure that it gets to wherever it's supposed to be going. Right, like th that new queue has taken ownership of that event and its delivery. And so now you can hack it. So I, I wanted to actually poke on something slightly different here. In, in that use case, that example that I, that I that enumerated where the first five get processed okay and the sixth one dies. Um, let, let's go back to the single event flow. And it gets sent, it gets delivered to the, to the receiver. And then the receiver returns a 400. Now, there is nothing in our spec or even the HTTP spec that says that 400 does not have side effects, right? So it's possible that it started processing that one event, did some changes to the backend system, and then things died. And he did not roll anything back. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm trying to equate that with the batching case where you process the first five and then the sixth one dies and you get back a 400. And I'm, in my mind, I'm trying to see if those two line up to say, well, it's pretty much the same thing. You did half the processing and you don't know whether it rolled it back or not as a result of that error. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, are we any worse off in batching than we are with the single case? And I'm inclined to say we aren't. I want to get your opinion on that, Scott. I, I think you're in a way worse case because what if you have 10 events that um, they all fail halfway? You, you have a 10 times more problem. I'm not sure about that, but OK. <laughs> So Scott, your position is what? I feel like you might be either do one or some variant of three or four, right? Meaning fully define it or basically remove it. That's right. Like, I mean, really all, all I want is a response format or remove it. Right, like the the current uh, square bracket bracket response is not it's not quite good enough. Right. Okay, so to try to narrow things down and move things along, let me ask this: Is there anybody on the call? And I'm going to say this in a very biased way, but forgive me. Is there anybody on the call who would like to advocate for position one, which is fully define the processing model? and leave the boundaries of cloud events as just a syntactical thing of what, how, how an event looks on the wire and you actually get into the processing model of semantics. Is there anybody who wants to advocate for number one? Well, I, <laughs> it's kind of what I did with saying, uh, let's take the webhook spec, move it into its own repository so we can do exactly this there because I agree with Scott, that it would be really valuable to have a defined processing model that is default and that people can agree to work on but it is out of the scope for cloud events itself so this is kind of my you know i don't know, compromise or whatever you want to call it do it but do it outside of cloud events and make sure that the http processing model we have one way where we define it and people can standardize on that or they can also do their own thing which is also fine so we don't force people to use our webhook spec 
because there are a hundred different ways to do uh, HTTP calls anyway. Okay, I have a question for you, but Mark's hand went up first. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I, I, I was I was going to comment that if we truly want this to to uh, be number one, then we likely should expand the the HTTP transport spec to include you know the uh, error codes be, or the status codes being returned. For example, you know I'm, I just pulled up the standard list and you know 202 accepted. So if you know if a receiver can just say, okay, I accepted it and you don't get any other information. But then if it's like a 200 okay, we would think about what is the payload in the batch case that would return the individual status codes that Scott is asking for. But then we'd be more prescriptive in terms of what we expect as a response there. Right. So, so my question back to you, Christoph, was I interpreted your comments about moving the, the webhook spec out as, uh, as just dealing with the singleton cloud event case. If, if you think that the webhook spec should handle batching as well, are, do you think that the definition of batching should be in the webhook spec um, as, as well? Because that, that, that's, because I, I view the webhook spec as a very generic HTTP spec, basically, and pretty much nothing to do with cloud events. But if we, if we push the batching stuff into that spec, then it becomes a little bit of both. It becomes generic for singleton events, but then it becomes very cloud event specific for batching. So how did you see that playing out? That's a good question, but I think like the webhook spec is missing also kind of the response Right now, what I said before, it doesn't really, it has some error codes, but it doesn't go into the details. What does 400 mean? Um, so once you go into these details, you can also do a special subsection for uh, when something is batched. And I think that is true whether you transport cloud events as a batch or whatever else as a batch. Okay, but, but your position is I think if correct me wrong, but isn't your position then to remove batching for now and look to do it outside of cloud events? No, uh, <laughs> my position <laughs> is to say batching is a thing, but we at spec level do not define it. Each transport can do whatever they want and support batching, but they need to make sure that it's transport level, level batching, not uh, semantic meaning of a batch. As long as transports do that, everything is fine. We don't have a problem. And we go in and say, we have uh, JSON as a format. We, because we define it, we also say, here is how you can do a batch in JSON. And then we have HTTP where we define, here's how we send it over. And basically all, the only thing we, we say is, whatever your format is, if, if it happens to be JSON, then it looks like this. If it's something else, like, I don't know, XML, you could also define batches there. Uh, just add batch at the end of your uh, content type. And that's it. And we still in the neither defines a processing model so far. So I think you will need that processing model anyway. And once you have batching, that processing model may, or at least the responses need to look a bit different. And then in the webhook spec, we actually go in and define a concrete processing model for what delivering a single event or a batch of event looks like. Uh, looks like. Got it. Does it make okay. sense? Or? Yeah, I think it does. Yes, thank you. Okay, Scott, your hands up. I, I just want to put one more point. It, I think the, the issue that I'm having is that I, given the current specification, I cannot implement uh, something that would do things like delegate uh, a, a batch of pub sub events, send them off and then uh, NAC upstream or NAC or ACK upstream. Like I, the current definition doesn't allow me to do what I would like to do. And I'm, so I guess I'm, I'm asking ways for optional individual acting neck, like response codes tied to the IDs of the, the batched events, like other transport support. Any comments from the crowd? So well, my, like my, I commented that you, you would have to change the HTTP spec to 
have status code and what you expect to be returned from that. Right. So this would change uh, instead of a batch being an array, it would be an object and the response would be a batch response. But the, the, you start defining a processing, mo processing model at this point, right? Which is something we don't have in the HTTP transport yet, if I'm not mistaken. But in HTTP, it already defines what you should respond with. So we, we are telling users what, they, what the processing model should be, but not really giving the hooks to actually make a reliable system. I'm not sure we do to, or to a some extent, HP automatically does it because it it has the status codes, but maybe not fully. If, like for example, again, the case where you say the event itself, the formatting is broken. There should be a particular within the 400 error code. It should be something more specific. You so you can react to this. It's just like here's the 400, whatever it is. Um, so if you want to do a more detailed system, you have to go in and, and define a bit more things, I think. So, so I want to circle back around to the question I asked earlier, which is, <clears throat> does anybody advocate for number one? And Christoph, you raised your hand, but I, based on what you said though, I don't think you're actually advocating for number one as much as you're advocating for number two with a follow-on piece of work of moving the webhook spec someplace else and expanding it to cover batching. Is that accurate? Yeah, but okay. it, I'm advocating for defining a processing model, but not within the spec. <laughs> right, right. No, I understood. And, and I think if we choose to do something like number two, or act technically anything but number one, that doesn't mean we couldn't do something else later, out, either, out, either as a follow-on spec or even in our spec later. But at, but I, I just want to make it clear that you're not actually advocating that we do number one within our spec itself. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. So let me go back to my original question. Is there anybody advocating that within the cloud event spec or one of our transport specs that we have you know, within our scope right now, that we actually define a full-fledged processing model, either for batching or single events? Okay, not hearing that. So that would then seem to me that we have, if you, if you want to boil it down to a Boolean choice, we have a choice of either keep what we have in the spec today or remove batching. And we can have different flavors of remove batching, but it basically comes down to remove batching or at least define the syntax for batching. Are, is that what a choice comes down to? Are there, or am I oversimplifying it? Okay. Just to get a feel for the group, because this, this is kind of a big decision as well, and it would require probably an offline vote, but I'd like to just get a sense of people on the call. I know Scott, given those two choices, your, prefer, your preference would be to remove batching. Other people on the call, what's your, your, your current take on here? And I will pick on people who have been quiet. So step forward on your own. Hey, Doug, this is Colin. I, hey, I Colin. vote to remove it, um, or, or suggest we remove it. We aren't voting yet. <laughs> Uh, this is a slippery slope. So it's batching today with an ACK or NAC based um, uh, processing around it. And then these typically lead to something more complex. And in the end, you know, you'll be looking at, at distributed transactions, which are a nightmare. So, so I vote keep this back pure and clean and, um, you know, keep batching out of it. Okay, thank you. Um, the other Doug voted for keeping it as is in the chat. Thank you, Doug. Anybody else want to speak up? Vladimir? Uh, hi. Um, I would propose that you remove it for now. Um, as uh, Sullivan commented, it, it can be a slippery slope that would uh, just extend to a lot of complications. Oh, okay. Thank you. What about Eric? You have an opinion on this one? I am currently <clears throat> leaning slightly towards removing it. I definitely think that it's been a strength that we don't have a processing model uh, definition uh, in the spec. 
I think that um, uh, over time, it will be very helpful uh, and create a lot of value to actually standardize processing models so that um, you could interact using the same code with any, any uh, provider, things like that. But I don't think that that's the point this spec is at. Okay, thank you. And I should point out that Roberto voted uh, for keeping it as is in the, in the PR itself, or the issue itself. Uh, yes, I'm on, yep. One other person, just because I don't think I've picked on them before. Ginger, do you have an opinion on this one? Ginger, are you still there? You have a cough mute? Oh my goodness. Trying oh my find, gosh. Trying to find the window and unmute. Just <laughs> problematic. Um, unfortunately, I don't know enough about this to give my opinion. Um, obviously, my colleague Colin gave his, so I'll just plus one him. <laughs> oh, that's wimping out, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in that case, I'll pick on one other person. Um, Baram, are you there? Yeah, I am. Do you have an opinion um, on this one? I I would vote to, or I would recommend we keep it just because I, I understand the, the concerns with overcomplicating and making the spec a little bit less clean, but as a practical matter, when you start doing pub sub at scale, people are gonna have to start implementing batching. And so if we have a way to guide people um, with the spec, I think, it's, I think it's gonna be something we have to deal with eventually so we might as well you know hit it as we're defining the rest of this right now okay cool thank you all right before i talk about next steps anybody else want to voice an opinion one way or the other okay it sounds to me based upon the that informal questioning it sounds like we actually might be kind of evenly split and that's unfortunate it'd be nice if there was overwhelming uh, opinions one way or the other um, and because we're kind of evenly split, I'm wondering whether that basically means um, we do a vote and, and see where things lie. Because um, I don't know how else to, to move forward here. It seems like it's a very easy choice in the sense that it's very clear what the choice is. We just need to decide one way or the other. Is there anybody who has any other ideas in terms of moving forward aside from just put it up for a vote? Could we get some feedback from Clemens and uh, Clemens representing Microsoft and I forget Tim from AWS because I since they're gonna be if they if they are to implement cloud events they're gonna implement it at scale and they might be affected by this. Okay. I would like to make sure that they are not impacting by us removing batching. Okay, we could do that. Uh, as I said, I, I believe Clemens is back from vacation next week. And unfortunately, as you can see, Tim isn't on the call, but what I can do is I could take the AI to reach out to both of them um, to make sure that they are at least on the call next week, or if not, at least voice their opinion through email in advance. Um, and not only them, like any big vendors who are going to yeah. be doing high events per second. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can try to force that. And what we can then do, I guess, is uh, try to avoid repeating what we talked about this week but give new people on the call, like for example, Clemens, who obviously had a, hasn't had a chance to voice his opinion yet, a chance to voice their opinion. And then if we don't sway people to one side or the other, start the vote next week. Uh, that's that, not fair? I really quickly, um, from the Microsoft perspective, I, I work with Clemens on implementing uh, this stuff. For, I'm, I'm gonna be the one kind of taking care of uh, actually implementing cloud events for Microsoft. Um, and at least from our perspective, if we don't have batching defined, we're just, we already do it in our, in Azure. So if it's not defined in the spec, we'll just have to come up with our own because it is a critical path for us. Um, so from the, the vendor perspective, that's kind of Microsoft's stance. But I'm, I'm sure Clemens can give more details to that. Okay, thank you. Um, I just, I, I'm speaking to Shay Harris, speaking just as Doug from IBM. That's actually been the entire reason that I was okay with it going in the spec to begin with was because I felt like enough people were going to do batching that it would be great if we had a single way of doing it as opposed to everybody roll their own and have zero interrupt on it. Even though I, I do kind of agree with Scott and I guess Colin when they said, one, it's not fully defined, true, and two, it is a very slippery slope. 
if people are going to do it anyway, let's at least get some level of interrupt as best we can, which is at least from a syntax perspective. Yeah, I agree with Baran from Microsoft. At Adobe, we also implemented batching. So we do batching on delivery as HTTP batching, an array of cloud events. And that's what I'm saying. Why, that's why I voted for keep as is. We already have that uh, specified in the HTTP transport layer. And I think that's good enough. Right. Okay. Anyway, um, okay, so I'll take an AI to, to poke, or just send out a note to poke in particular Microsoft, AWS, and, and uh, or I guess Clemens, um, and as well as the other you know, big guys to get their point of view and to warn people that we may be doing a vote next week. Uh, or vote starting next week, I should say. Um, hold on, I'm gonna take some notes here. So okay. if you guys say remove from the spec, do you mean the sentences that are in the primer that basically says it's defined at transport level? Or do you want to keep that, which basically says we don't define it in spec? Uh, but instead, do you mean removing the JSON format uh, that defines the batching and the one, the thing that we do at HTTP transport level? So basically removing it from those, the format and the transport, but keeping it in the primer? Anybody want to answer that one? I would like to keep it in the primer and in the trans HTTP transport. But yeah. that's because you're advocating. But you're, you're asking yeah. you're advocating for number two. I think I think I think what Christoph is asking is, if it what does remove actually mean? Um, my interpretation of it is to pretty much remove it from the spec in terms of even talking about it. But that doesn't mean that a transport couldn't batch it up if they do it. We just don't talk about how to do it. That was my interpretation of it anyway. Scott, what was your interpretation of remove? Uh, it would be remove the formal definition and you can still roll your own. It would just be a cloud event. Does that answer your question, Christoph? Okay, so we would keep it in the primer, but drop the JSON and HTTP definitions. I mean, that's also okay for me. I, at least it means like Kafka and some, some other things, we allow that to happen, basically. So we strictly make it a transport level concern. It's okay for me. What are we saying there? Okay, so you talk about this paragraph right here, right? Exactly. Okay. Was this happened before or after we added the JSON batching? This was before. So, but I, 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 because I, I'm, I was also kind of in a camp. Don't add it to the spec itself. Let's not do that. It's a slippery slope. We'll just add in a world of pain because we have to map it back to all the transports that already have their own processing model for batches. Uh, let's not do this. So I added to this, added this um, with input from others. Okay. And then, then we said, okay, now we say it's a transport level concern. So we HTTP is our transport. We use JSON. How do we do it? Uh, we should define it. So that's where we ended up. Why I ended up doing it for that? Because this almost sounds almost kind of contradictory to what we put into spec. Um, that, that, well, that is contradictory, that's not the right word for it. But it's weird that this, this thing basically says we're punting, but then we turn around and define a, a syntax for it. So it, it, it feels a little bit awkward. Interesting. OK. OK. Um, so I th anyway, I think we have a path forward. Um, we'll see how it goes next week. Um, I, I did want to draw people's attention to something. And I, I just, even though we only have three minutes left, I'm not obviously going to push for a vote on this since I just opened it yesterday. But we have this property called schema URL, um, which to me is inconsistent because we have data content type and data encoding or something like that, data content encoding or something like that. But we have these two fields called data, and then we have schema URL, which relates to data, but it's not called data. And so I'm advocating actually changing the name to add the word data in front so that we're consistent. So that way every property that points directly to data itself has the word data in front of it. Um, obviously this is a 
breaking change, but I wanted to get a general sense of what people thought about this. Do you want to be consistent or do we not care and it's not worth breaking things? Any comments from people? Given the high level description, that seems right. Say, say that one more time, you're cutting out a little there, Eric. Uh, given your high level description, I haven't read the text, uh, that, that seems correct. I, I would prefer consistency. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to comment? Where would you define the entire schema of the, the whole payload if for like structured HTTP? You're talking about of the cloud event itself? Yeah, right. That's a completely separate issue. This, 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 this URL has never defined that. This URL has always just defined data. And the fact well, that you're asking that question could mean that it's a good thing we, that we possibly do do a rename. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking that. It, you know, it's, I don't think it's been used very much. And I think the implementations I've seen also include the, the entire envelope definition, which I've always thought was a little funny. That's, that's not just funky, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, but you remove the discoverability of extensions. M maybe, but that was never the intent of this URL. Unless I'm completely messing up, I don't believe this URL was ever meant to describe the cloud event. It was meant to describe data. I've always understood it to kind of describe the entire envelope. Okay. I'll, I'll double check on the spec, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it is. But if so, if, if I'm right, then I think it'd be a really good thing to clarify this with the word data in front. Um, but I'll double check the spec. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, with that, I think we're technically out of time. Oh, I just pasted the description in the chat. Oh, there you go, okay. So it is just about data. Thank you, Mark. So this may be good just, not just because of consistency for my OCD, but for uh, understanding as well. Okay, so with that, we're technically at one o'clock or the top of the hour. Did I miss anybody on roll call? I think I got everybody. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, please do review the two data PRs, one from James and one from Clemens. Um, and we'll talk about, again about those next week. And if you are involved in the SDK work, please stay on the call. So that means maybe Mark and Scott, if nobody else.